Hello, Jeff Zwerink, and welcome back to Give and Take. This is the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas and look at how they address important biblical ideas. And I'm excited about today's show because I have Dr. Fuzz Rana on, and we are going to address whether transhumanism diminishes humanity's value. Fuzz, it's good to have you here today. Thanks, Jeff. So I know you've got a book coming out on transhumanism, and uh, just kind of let's start things off. What is transhumanism, and and what what is it? that we're studying here. Yeah, well, transhumanism is an intellectual movement that actually has its beginnings in the early 1900s with the publication of a book called The Atlas, written by J.B.S. Haldane, who was a famous British geneticist. But its modern-day incarnation is probably tracing back to the 1960s. And the big picture of transhumanism is the idea of using science and technology to enhance our uh, human beings beyond our biological limitations, increasing our physical strength, our intellectual capability, uh, even our psychological well-being. In, in other words, taking control of our own evolution, if mm -hmm. you will, trying to evolve human beings into post-human species. So this would be, you know, kind of sci-fi type stuff of, you know, Khan and Star Trek where, you mm -hmm. know, he's kind of super strength, super mind, yeah. or even uh, like the Borg in Star Trek, those sorts of things where mm -hmm. you're taking humanity and doing, adding things to it to make it bigger, faster, stronger. Yes, that's right. And, uh, you know, uh, this idea was the fodder of science fiction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And really, that transhumanism was considered a fringe idea, but it's actually moved into the mainstream in the last decade or so. And in part, it's because of advances in things like gene editing or computer brain interface technology, anti-aging technology, hmm. that now make it realistic to think that the transhumanist vision could actually become reality. So, so, so if I get what you're saying there, the idea that we have that we can now go in and change the genetic structure we can actually interface biological and computer stuff. That's what's mm -hmm. bringing that into the mainstream, if yes. you will. So kind of the, to me, one of the bottom line questions of this is, you know, at some level, this is not too different from taking aspirin so that you feel better. Mm -hmm. It enhances your ability, diminishes, right. helps your body work better. Um, but if we're making people that are faster, sm smarter, stronger, can live longer, that seems to have this connotation of increased value, if you will. Does that impact humanity's value? Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting because there are some Christian scholars and secular scholars who think that transhumanism actually is the death knell for this concept of human exceptionalism. And that that's an idea that really has strong roots in a, a Christian worldview. Mm -hmm. The human beings are made in God's image, and because we bear God's image, we have infinite worth and value. And that idea has always been very uncomfortable for many people in the academic arena who kind of want to displace human beings from our status as being the crown of God's creation. Uh, and so, so, the fa so the fact that we're exceptional in some sense is, yeah. pro is what's troubles, and there's kind of a push towards yes. humans are just the latest, greatest animal, nothing right. particularly unusual except that we happen to be the most recent in time type thing. That, that's exactly right. And, and the idea is that if we're the product of an evolutionary history, well, then we're not the handiwork of a creator. We're the, the product of evolution. But the idea is that evolution kind of cobbles organisms together mm -hmm. and, and that, that human beings are being viewed as the product of evolution as being fundamentally flawed mm -hmm. and, and that transhumanism is coming along and saying we can, re, we can fix those flaws. We can make human beings even better than we were before through the technology that we develop. And if that's the mindset, then it means that human beings really lack intrinsic value and worth, that we really are not exceptional uh, uh, if we can actually improve upon our status as human beings through technology. So if transhumanism works, that we're able to increase our brain capacity or live longer, does that mean, does the, the, core or the implication of that, that we're not made in God's image? Yeah, that's kind of the way people reason. So, well, I guess the deeper question is, is that actually the correct way to look at well, it? I know I people reason I actually way, think, but. ironically, transhumanism doesn't undermine the concept of human exceptionalism, but provides some of the most compelling reasons to think that we are exceptional as human beings. So well, let's flesh out some of those reasons. For well, us. Be, I mean, think about it this way. We're the only creature that has ever existed in the history of the Earth that has 
even capable of developing the enterprise of science mm -hmm. and then spawning technology from our un insight about nature and then using that technology not only to create civilization, but then to think about using that technology to actually alter our very makeup. So that the mere fact that we are even contemplating what transhumanists are contemplating highlights just how unique we are as human beings. Hmm. In other words, it's our exceptional nature that even is makes transhumanism possible and the transhumanism vision possible. So, so whereas, you know, if you were to just look at this strictly in evolutionary scenario, yes, we're evolving, changing into something new, but where every other creature, presumably natural processes are doing that, where the creature, us, is active, actively doing it, yes. which makes us exceptional, is, is part of what your yeah, argument is. There, yeah, correct? that's exactly right. I mean, when you think about technology, you know, it's amazing because with human beings, you know, we, when we appear on the scene, we're operating with, you know, primitive, archaic, hunter-gatherer technology. Mm -hmm. And really, within a relatively short period of time, we're putting people on the moon, we're developing computer brain interfaces, mm -hmm. we're thinking about altering our very nature. But you look at Neanderthals, they were on Earth longer than we've been on Earth, and their technology was static. And they actually go extinct because they're not able to keep up with changes in the, in the environment. And so that's a, highlighting the fact that we really seem to be different than every other creature in our capacity to not only create technology, but for that technology to to advance, to mm -hmm. progress, where transhumanism is just kind of the, the culmination of that, that technology growth. So quick, one last question, kind of quick answer. Should, as a Christian, should we embrace transhumanism, this kind of push to make ourselves better, or is this something as Christians we ought to resist? Uh, I, I'm ambivalent about transhumanism. I think there's a lot of positive things that can come from the technology that is fueling the transhumanism vision. We can treat people with diseases and debilitating injuries that we currently couldn't provide any kind of treatment for. So there's really positive mm -hmm. things that can come from it, but there's also concerning things as well. And so as Christians, I think we need to be balanced. But ultimately, transhumanism is about rescuing humanity from the, the, what, the, the feeling that uh, we're trapped mm -hmm. you know, as human beings, that we're, we have limitations, that, that things are not the way they should be. And people are looking to science and technology as the means for salvation. But the desires that transhumanists have are desires that all people have, and it's desires that are found in the gospel, or the answer to those desires are found in the gospel. So there's a very interesting intersection between transhumanism and, and Christianity. If you see that, and that's a great bridge now to allow us to engage our culture with the gospel. Well, thanks, Buzz. I appreciate your comments. You know, transhumanism is an important topic that we need to be equipped and ready to address. And at first glance, it looks like it's a threat to Christianity. But as we dig into it, what we see is that even the desire to make humans better reflects just how exceptional we are and supports the biblical view that we are made in God's image. You know, I would encourage you to go to reasons.org, search on transhumanism. You'll get a lot of resources that Fuzz has written about this. But even more, go to reasons.org 2819 and you will have access, figure out how you can get a copy of his book that he wrote with his colleague Ken Samples called Humans 2.0. It will equip you to be a part of this great conversation and help you to spread the gospel.